Hello, and thanks for visiting our website, rebuilderinabox.com. Today we're going to be rebuilding the GM truck alternator, known as the DR44G on newer models. Identification is easy on this type because the DR44 is stamped right into the front casing by the pulley. Taking the plastic cover off to observe the inside, you'll see three access holes indicated by the yellow dots. What you want to do is tick, stick two screwdrivers down inside and pry outward to raise up the tank so you can lift up one side at a time. Then stick one screwdriver down over here and pry outward. Not pocket screwdrivers, but small shank screwdrivers, doesn't matter Phillips or not. Looking at the inside, we have the rectifier here, voltage regulator, and then this is the slip ring and the brushes inside this. What they've done on this to inhibit rebuilding, or kind of discourage rebuilding, is the negative diodes on the rectifier are press fit into the rear plate and then spot welded at these junctions here. So if you have a diode problem, you have a pretty labor intensive problem. However, most of these units are pretty well serviceable by voltage regulator replacement, brushes and bearings. To get the pulley off, you need a half inch impact and a 15 16 socket. Put a rag on the pulley or wear a glove. And the pulley usually comes right off. If not, get two screwdrivers and wedge them in behind it and pry it off. For now it's a good idea to put the pulley nut back on the threads to protect them from getting dinged around while you're doing any other work. First we're going to take the regulator off and you'll see the three screws holding it down and then the nut on this post. This is a 10 millimeter. Take it off. Then these three screws are an E5 or reverse torx, some people call it, size number five. On the output post, this outside tube or ferrule has to come off and it has knurls down on the bottom of it to make it fit onto the post. So what we need to do is put the nut up on the top of the threads and tap down on it lightly to break the barrels loose and then get a pair of channel locks and twist it off and pull it up. There's a close-up shot of the neurals that the outside tube sits on and when you put that back together that both parts have to be clean with a wire toothbrush. The neurals there and also the internal part of the tube. Right down below the output post, the voltage regulator has a solder connection to the rectifier. And what it is, there's a metal tang right here that comes straight up out of the rectifier. And then the voltage regulator has a push on spade connector, something like that there. And you have to get that hot enough to melt the solder. And then when you see the solder liquefy, pull it off. Now what you need to do that soldering job is at least a 200 watt soldering gun. We're going to use one that's a lot higher than that for demonstrative purposes because I want to show you a little trick that we do. We heat it up and then smack it sideways. And what that does is that flings all the solder out of there as it's hot. Then you can see in there pretty well and you can either get a little pocket screwdriver or some sort of a windshield tool sharpened to a point 
and you can start to pick away some of the solder a little bit, maybe pry open the connection somewhat. Then when you heat it up again, watch for the solder to liquefy and pull straight up. Now we want to take apart the four bolts that hold the thing together. You can use the proper E-size Torx bit, reverse Torx bit tool if you want to, but a six-sided quarter inch works perfectly fine every time. Now we want to hold on to the back half and tap off the front half on the plate with a hammer. Tap in 180 degree increments. Tap a little bit on one side, go all the way around. Sometimes it's a good idea to put a little bit of rust bust or WD-40 down in the bearing. Possibly apply a little bit of heat there. But usually they come right off. Now we have the bearing in the front plate and the rotor still inside the stator rear assembly. Now what we're going to do is hold on to the shaft and start tapping it. Until it comes out. There's a spacer on the drive end in between the actual rotor body and the bearing and we have to take note that there's a flat side and a raised up side and the extra ring, the raised up side goes on the side next to the rotor. We need to inspect the slip rings where the brushes ride in this area here and here. Most of the time there will be grooves on them but if you can clean it up with a scotch bright and it's not burnt through to the black plastic underneath it's reusable. Now we're faced with this design factor here it's kind of a, a bump in the road getting this rear bearing off. First things first if, if you don't have high mileage on your vehicle or if it's been recently rebuilt and you're undergoing some sort of a voltage regulator defect possibly the bearing will be good. You can ch test the bearing by holding it in your fingers and spinning it. And if you feel any roughness then the bearing is probably not reusable. If it feels nice and smooth, especially after you've taken seal out and put a couple drops of oil in it, then the bearing would be considered reusable under most circumstances. However, if you do need to remove the rear bearing, which is normally the case, Sometimes you can wedge two screwdrivers 180 degrees apart between the plastic and the bearing itself. Then if you apply a little bit of heat, don't pry up with the screwdrivers, but turn them to try and get the bearing to break loose. If it won't break loose for you, the alternative method is to Put the bearing in a vise so that the jaws close, missing the plastic fan, but tightening up on the outer race of the bearing itself. And what we're going to do is tighten the vise down so tight that it cracks the outer race of the bearing itself because it forces it out around. And as a safety feature, we have to put a piece of cardboard and a rag because when you tighten it so tight that actually explodes and you, it can shrapnel can cut you it's nothing serious but uh, the best thing to do is put a piece of cardboard on there first and then put a rag over everything so that when it does explode it can't hurt you so what we're going to do is just super tighten up the vise by tapping on the handle to such a point to where it squeezes the bearing out around 
and cracks the outer race. So you break the outer race and get it off there. Then the cage on the inside and the balls you can take a pair of side cuts and cut them all out and slowly piece by piece get that back bearing off of there. Then you're faced with the uh, inner race stuck to the shaft and the way you deal with that is a Dremel with a reinforced cutoff wheel. These are available just about anywhere, particularly Walmart. And as always, you have to wear safety glasses, but in this particular operation, uh, you sure and get a very efficient pair of safety glasses that have side protection and some face protection wouldn't be a bad idea either because it gets kind of sparky and throwing stuff. Now what I'm going to do here is kind of the best of both worlds. Um, I'm going to take my Dremel and cut a groove in the outer race right where that yellow line is. That way I can either cut it all the way through and then flip it over and cut it again to get the outer race off or I can cut it halfway through and that will make it easy to uh, finish cracking with, by tightening up the vise. Now we're getting to our deep well socket selection in your toolbox and you want to choose the smallest socket that you have that will fit down without doing any damage to the copper slip ring. That one won't quite go. It's a 5 8 It actually goes over the outside but it's got some additional material on the inside. Here we have an 18 millimeter that fits. But the three quarter, this is a thin wall, actually a three quarter thick wall would be a little bit better. But we're going to use the three quarter inch socket. What you do is put a couple drops of oil on the shaft. Set the bearing on there. Stand it up so that the shaft is on the bench. Set the bearing on there straight and gently tap down so that the bearing drives all the way on. As we tap this on, remember as in tapping any bearing onto any shaft, you want to apply pressure and tap so that the socket or bearing tool only contacts the inner race. Never tap on the outer race and make sure that the outer parts of the socket stay as far away from possible from the rubber seal. Now we're going to change the brushes. You'll see this black plastic cover and it's got a hinge type clip on both sides. One side has one on it so reach in there and take, take that loose. Then work both sides off and take the whole clip off. Now we can pull the brushes out. Notice how the top brush has a little lineup pin and is the bigger hole of the two. So the smaller hole is the brush that goes on the bottom, the bigger hole goes on the top. But don't put the new brushes back in yet. What we're going to do is we're going to take our three quarter deep well that we just put the rear bearing on with and use it to drive out the old bearing on the front plate. Now the front bearing presents a bit of a challenge uh, because the manufacturer we think it's because they really don't want you doing any of this kind of thing but when you knocked it out there was rolled aluminum over the edges of it and you can take your chisel first and chisel that back out of the way with a sharpened up chisel like we did here because the way that the outer race of the bearing on the drive-in is retained is a cold rolled aluminum lip and it's only about a sixteenth to a thirty-second of an inch long but it's all the way around we've chiseled it off 
then what you do is put the aluminum plate in an oven bake it at 350 for 20 minutes get everything nice and expanded then put red Loctite around the outer edge of the cold bearing then drop the bearing in then we recommend a method it's called staking and what we've done is taken an ordinary chisel sharpened it up on the end then we're going to take and go around the whole diameter every quarter inch or so and hit at an angle so that this leftover aluminum stock on the side can roll up over the side of the new 303 bearing. Now here's a close-up of the bearing and you'll see that just on the edge and it's like this on both sides there's a rounded off portion where we can take advantage of this area to try and push some of the slop in the aluminum housing over onto this part to hold it in from end play. And here you can see where we've taken advantage of the rounded off portion of the bearing and smashed over the slop aluminum so that it acts as a retainer to hold the bearing into place. And you go all around the whole outside diameter of the outer race like that. Particularly this one here you can see where the chisel has hit down hard enough from an outside angle to push the aluminum so that it's got a a barrier to keep the, imp, the, the bearing from walking back and forth. Let's talk for just a second about the rotor because we're getting ready to put it back together. Clean up the shaft with some Scotch-Brite or 400 grit paper. Clean up the slip rings with 400 grit paper. If your slip ring is worn through, you can call us or you can email us and we'll send you a whole new assembly with the bearing already on it and with the new slip ring. Uh, they're probably going to be about 40 bucks, but that still keeps you way under the cost of this alternator at the parts store. They're, they're very expensive. Put a couple drops of oil on the shaft and if this has come off uh, reinstall it now with the raised up portion towards the body of the rotor the flat side goes out. Lay the front plate in the vise. And set the rotor down in it. If it don't quite go, you can hold it in your hand. Give it a few taps to get everything on there. Put the pulley back on pretty much just the opposite of the way you took it off. Even though the manufacturer doesn't, we recommend the use of a lock washer. We have the half inch impact set to clockwise with the 15 16 socket. Wear a glove or put a rag around the pulley. Now we need to put a couple drops of oil and run it around the outside race of the rear bearing. Set the assembly where it goes on the housing on this particular type. The two mounting bolts are at the bottom. The battery stud goes at approximately 11 o'clock. We have no brushes installed yet. So there's an empty hole there. We want to start lightly tapping only on the aluminum plate so that the brush gets started, I mean so that the bearing gets started. Then make sure that the through bolts, the hole at the top 
is lined up with the threaded hole on the bottom. So now we have the four through bolts back in. We're going to tighten these up little by little, tap down a little bit, and finish tightening up in a crossing pattern. Tap all around with the hammer in a downward motion and finish torquing down the four through bolts that hold it together in an X pattern. At this point we want to make sure that the pulley spins freely. If there are any little scrapes or hits on the inside where you can feel them at, stop the rotor at that point. Tap on it a little bit on the side and maybe snug up the bolts a little bit. If there's a little bit of a hit somewhere or a little bit of like a paper sound or, or, a, or a kind of a stopping sensation, it's really nothing to worry about. Probably a little piece of rust or something and after it gets on the vehicle that will wear right off. There's a right way and a wrong way to put the brushes in. Looking down at the back of the alternator like this, we look at the brushes and we call it left to right uphill. As you can see, when you look at them left to right, it goes uphill. And that's how we want to put them in viewing the back of the alternator. Right at this point, we're going to pull this plastic brush holder up a little bit, get a piece of 80 grit sandpaper or a fine file, and what we're doing is filing the aluminum surface where the brush holder, where the brush is going to contact the actual aluminum surface. Then we want to take a light layer of dielectric grease or white lithium grease and put it on the aluminum that we just cleaned so that it inhibits any future corrosion. Then we're ready to put in the brush and looking down on the alternator from this angle you'll be going this is just the angle that we want to go in at the smaller hole of the two goes in first and then the larger hole of the two goes in the top at that angle there here you can see where we're kinda of holding them with one finger while we get ready to push the plastic cap on put the side with the two hooks on it first and get it hooked in and then line everything up before you push the other side down now we can do, take a piece of sandpaper and clean up the area, the flat area on the rectifier around the battery output post so that the regulator itself makes good contact. We need a small amount of white lithium grease on the area that we just cleaned. Push the regulator down into place, making sure that the spade connection lines up. Put the three E5 head screws back in holding the voltage regulator down and make sure that the other four holding the rectifier down are tight. The tube or the ferrule that goes on the battery stud has to be cleaned on both ends and a light coat of either dielectric grease or white lithium grease applied. Tighten the battery post down tightly with the 10 millimeter wrench. To solder the voltage regulator back into the rectifier, you need a 200 watt soldering gun. For demonstrative purposes, we're going to show you real quick with a hotter one.
and then the lid just snaps back on. You can see where it lines up because of the voltage regulator output and the battery post. And we're done.